For more information on tutoring or how to support MOOF University and the production of more videos, please visit MOOFUniversity.com. Thank you and enjoy. Okay, so we mentioned that light has wave-particle duality. So here we're going to talk a little bit about the wave nature of light, and we're also going to talk about the electromagnetic spectrum. So I've drawn a few waves here. We've got this first one, the second one, and this third one here. And so what's going on with this, right? That's the question. We know that light travels as a wave. So one wave, we can think about it as having a starting point and a stopping point for each wave. So what I've drawn here is one full wave from start to stop. Now if this thing continues on, we're, we have another wave. So this right here is one full wave or one full cycle, right? One wave is one cycle, right? So if I sort of split this up like this, Right, we see this wave traveling up and then down and then back up to its starting point. It started here, it goes up, it comes down, and then it gets back to the point where it's starting again to give another wave. Right. So here, these are two full waves or two full cycles here. Okay. Now, I'm going to remove that just because it's a little bit messy. So there are a few characteristics of waves that we should know. Okay. The first thing is the is that uh, this idea of wavelength, okay, wavelength, represented by this this Greek letter lambda. This is lambda. Oops, lambda. Okay, the Greek letter lambda. So that's the wavelength, and it's measured in meters. Sometimes you'll see it measured in nanometers or angstroms, uh, but mostly meters and nanometers, at least from what I've seen. Okay, so what is the wavelength? Well, it's really the length of one full cycle or one full wave. It's exactly what it sounds like. So you could measure it um, from from right here, right, the starting point to the stopping point, or really the next starting point if you think about it. Right, that's one wavelength. Okay, but that's not usually how it's taught. It's usually taught in what I think is probably the simplest manner: the distance between one crest to the next crest. So this is lambda here. That is the wavelength of this wave. Right? I use the word crest. Crest is just the the peak of the wave, right? The word for the for the bottom uh, half of the wave is called the trough, spelled T-R-O-U-G-H. So I'll just actually spell both of those here. So that is a crest, and this is a trough. Okay. So that's the wavelength there. So you can see that the wavelength for this first wave up here is longer than the wavelength of this one. So let's call this wavelength 1 and wavelength 2. So wavelength 1 is greater than wavelength 2. You can see that it's longer, right? Now what about this third wave? This third wave, it's actually got the same wavelength as wavelength 1. So we could call this wavelength 3, but it's actually the same length as this. If I bring up that little, 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 um, these dotted lines that are going up and down here, you can see that one full cycle of of the first wave going from this point to this point is the same length as from this point to this point on this wave. So they have the same wavelength. Okay. But we can see that this one is, is shorter for sure. Okay. Now there's another characteristic, and that is basically the height of the wave. So we can see that here. That is called the amplitude, A, the amplitude. So A is amplitude, that's just the height of the wave. So we can see here that this amplitude, uh, A here, we, we, this one's about half. We'll call that amplitude one half of A. And A, or the amplitude, um, spelled like this, amplitude, basically refers to the brightness of the light. Okay. So if we have a higher amplitude, we have brighter light. We have a smaller amplitude. We have dimmer light. Okay. All right. Let's remove those lines because they're crazy. Okay. Now the another uh, another characteristic of a wave we want to think about is the frequency, represented by this this Greek letter here. This is the Greek letter nu, and it's measured in one over seconds or seconds to the negative one, which is hertz, represented by hz. So one over seconds. So that just means per second, right? So let me put this here. 
as being new. Okay, it's got like a little curve, and then it looks kind of like a V. Not a V though. Okay, it looks kind of like a. Anyway, um, the frequency is measured as per second. Specifically, it's cycles per second or waves per second. So wave per second or cycles per second. So we can see that here. If we again, if we bring up these little graph lines here, this this line here at the very bottom, we see this. This is one second that the wave is propagating through space, and here, two seconds. So really, it's it's we're trying to figure out the number of waves that we see per second. So how many wavelengths we see per second? So this first one, we've got we start here from that one green circle to the next green circle. That's one wave, and that was one second. So we have one wave per second or two waves per two seconds, right? So the the frequency here for this first wave is one hertz, right? Or one s to the negative one, or one one over s cycles per second. The one down here is also one cycle per second, right? The third one, it's got one wave in one second, so also one hertz, or one hertz. Um, and actually, I'm not sure if that's right, if it's hurt. Anyway, one hertz. <laughs> the second one, though, we can see that we actually have two full waves in one second. So we, have, we go from start, up, down, back to the starting position, up, down, up, back to the starting position. That's two waves in one second, or four waves in two seconds. So that has a higher frequency, two hertz. So it has a, a smaller wavelength than this one and this one, but a higher frequency. And what we'll end up seeing is that frequency of a wave and a wavelength are interrelated. And they, if they multiply them together, you get the speed of the wave. The speed of the wave is equal to the wavelength times the frequency. So the, the wavelength is measured basically in um, meters per wave or meters per cycle. And we're multiplying that by frequency, which is waves um, per second. So number of waves cancel and we get meters per second. So now it, ha it just so happens that when we're talking about light, all electromagnetic radiation speed in a vacuum is a constant value C. It's a constant value C and that value of C is 2.9979245 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. So that's a pretty gigantic number and it's kind of messy so it's often just rounded to three significant figures as 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So if the speed of light is C, and that light is a wave, then we can say that C is equal to lambda nu. Okay? This is a very, very important equation. And you'll see it very often in general chemistry and also in physics as well. What's important about this equation is that C is a constant value. So lambda times nu always equals this constant value. Which means that if if you have a high lambda or a large wavelength, then you have a small frequency. And if you have a small wavelength, you have a high frequency. Okay, and we can see that here. This one has a larger wavelength, but a smaller frequency. Long wavelength here uh, with, a, with a, a frequency of 1. Over here, shorter wavelength with a frequency of 2. So this wavelength is actually in. This wavelength of 2 is actually half that of wavelength 1. What's also important is that you can solve this for wavelength or for um, frequency. So you can divide both sides by um, by frequency or by, by nu to get to solve for the wavelength. So the wavelength would be equal to uh, C over nu. So this is that equation just rearranged. You can also solve for frequency by dividing both sides by wavelength. So the frequency would be equal to C over lambda. So do you need to memorize all three of these? No, just rem memorize this one because you can just manipulate it to get either of these and solve for the variable you're looking for in questions like this. So this example problem says a certain light has a wavelength of 450 nanometers. What's its frequency in hertz? Okay, so what's its frequency? Frequency is nu, so I'm going to use the, the equation that's solved for nu. So it's going to be nu equals c over lambda. 
So C is a constant. That's just 3 times 10 to the 8th. Now, I should put the sig figs, but I'm not going to because I'm lazy. <laughs> um, 3 times 10 to the 8th. And lambda is is uh, 450 nanometers. The issue of it with that, though, is that the speed of light is already written for me here in meters. I'm going to convert the 450 nanometers to meters so that I can cancel the meter units. Okay. So I'll have 450. Let's move that over a little bit, actually. So we'll have 450 nanometers. And I'll set up a conversion factor here. There are 1 times 10 to the 9th nanometers in 1 meter. So the nanometers will cancel. And then I'll get 450. I'm running out of space here. Let's put 450 times 10 to the negative 9 meters. So that is my wavelength. Right, that is my wavelength. And so I'll plug that in here. So 450 times 10 to the negative 9 meters. And then I have meters here cancel. And, I'm, and I'm, if I punch this into my calculator, I get 6.67 times 10 to the 14 1 over seconds. Right? Or 6.67 times 10 to the 14th hertz. That is my answer. Okay. So you have a lot of different problems like this. That's a 14. It looks like a 19 now that I boxed it. Let's kind of change that, make it look a little bit prettier. So we got the 14th there. Okay. So there are a lot of problems that are like this. Just be sure that you can manipulate this equation and solve problems like that. Next up is the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, so as we can see here. So at the top here, we've got wavelengths in meters and frequencies in hertz. So you can see that going from left to right, we've got small wavelengths here, and it's increasing this way. So we're going increasing wavelength this way. And as the wavelength increases, what's happening to these frequencies? They're getting smaller. So we're having decreasing frequencies. So what are the different types of electromagnetic radiation in the spectrum? Over here, we've got gamma rays in this range. We've got x-rays over here, ultraviolet rays here. We've got infrared rays, or IR, over here. We've got uh, microwaves right over here. We've got radio waves over here at this end. Okay. Now, in this tiny little section here, we've got the visible spectrum. Okay. That's the part of the spectrum of light that we can actually see. It's really, really small relative to the overall spectrum, right? We can see, though, that this visible portion is actually within, or specifically, the range of 400 nanometers to 750 nanometers. And we see that this is the colors of the rainbow, right? We know them as Roy G. Biv, uh, but since I've written it here as uh, from you know from lowest wavelength to highest wavelength, it's vibgior. <laughs> anyway, the point is that so it's the backwards here, but you probably learned maybe maybe not um, that the colors of the rainbow are Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. So near the 400 end, 400 nanometer end, we've got violet light, and we've got up to the 700, 750 is where the red is. Okay, so red has red light has a longer wavelength and thus a shorter frequency. Um, and violet light has a smaller wavelength and a, um, a, a larger frequency. Okay. So now I do have some ter terms down here that are just for your information. Uh, if you hear the term monochromatic when referring to light, it's speaking about light of one wavelength. Whereas if you hear polychromatic, it's referring to light of many wavelengths. Those are just terms that you might might hear. Okay. So one question that comes up a lot when we're talking about the electromagnetic spectrum um, is what's going on with the energy of the different types of electromagnetic radiation. Now that's something that we're going to kind of address in the next video, but I will kind of comment on something here. We kind of we we listen to the radio in our cars, and there are radio waves all over the place, and they're actually pretty low in energy. They're not harmful to us, right? But as you kind of move your way over to the left, especially when you think about ultraviolet rays, they can cause sunburns, x-rays, uh, they can do 
damage uh, to your body that can cause mutations in your DNA, for instance, and gamma rays are just super high in energy. So we've got to the left over here with these really tiny wavelengths and high frequencies, we've got high energy rays on this side. Okay. And over here to the right, where we have smaller, or excuse me, we have larger wavelengths, but smaller frequencies, we've got lower energy. Right? And this is something that you should keep in mind when you watch the next video. So I hope this video was helpful. Thank you for watching. If you found that video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with friends. Thank you, and happy studying.